In this video, we will walk through how to import vulnerability scan data from your Tenable Security Center into your ServiceNow instance to be used with vulnerability response. After logging into the Tenable Security Center like I've done here, click on Analysis and then choose Queries. This is the Query Builder. We use the queries to import vulnerability scan data into ServiceNow, as you'll see a bit later. I've already created one, so let's click on it and see what it looks like. In the Query Builder, it's important to note that the type needs to be set as vulnerability and the tool needs to be vulnerability detail list. You can also add specific filters so you can limit which vulnerabilities are being imported. In this case, I want to make sure that only vulnerabilities where an exploit is available and where they've been flagged as high or critical are going to be imported into vulnerability response. In the next section, we'll look at how to download the Tenable app from the ServiceNow store. You can browse to the store by going to store.servicenow.com. And once here, we can request the Tenable app by searching for the word Tenable in the search field. The search results will show you Tenable Security Center for Vulnerability Response. We'll click that and it will take us to the page for the app. This page offers a wealth of information, including which versions of ServiceNow it's compatible with, as well as other system requirements. We'll click the Get button and that will prompt us to log in with our HI credentials. HI is ServiceNow's support portal. Once I've logged in, I can click View Requests if I have previously requested an application from the ServiceNow store. Once here, I simply input the instance name that I wish to install this application to and click the Validate Instance. Next, let's switch over to my ServiceNow instance and install the Tenable application. Now the quickest way to do so is to type in the word applications into your filter navigator, which will take you to system applications and then applications. Now I've created a shortcut here, so I'm gonna click that and then click the downloads button. From here, you can search the applications for the word Tenable. You'll see Tenable Security Center for Vulnerability Response appear. Click the install button and that will install the application into your instance. Once this is done, refresh your screen and you can confirm that it's installed. To do so, simply look in the filter navigator for the word Tenable. Now let's take a look at the configuration options next. To do so, we'll look at the general settings. The first thing that we need to do is activate the integration. So it's been installed, but it hasn't been activated or configured. So to activate, we click the checkbox next to activate the Tenable integration and click update. Now it's updated, but we still need to configure some communication between the Tenable Security Center and your ServiceNow instance. The next step to do so is to click the connectors. Now I've already created a connector here, so let's take a look at what that looks like. A few key points to note. The endpoint is the URL or IP address of the Tenable Security Center. The mid server is a Java applet that runs on a Windows or Linux machine that allows communication between your on-premise Tenable Security Center and your ServiceNow instance. And then the username and passwords were created on the Tenable Security Center previously and they allow us to communicate between that Tenable Security Center and the mid server. Once that's done, you can test the connector by clicking this Test Connectors button, or you can update by clicking the Update button. Now, I haven't made any changes, so I'm just going to move on to the next step, which is creating a scheduled import. Now, these imports are what we use to pull the vulnerability scan data from Tenable into our ServiceNow instance. Let's take a look at the one that I've previously created. You see I named it Sample. You can name yours whatever you'd like. The initial run is going to be the very first run that we do. How far back do we want to go with that vulnerability scan data? Now I've set mine to within 30 days. Yours can be anywhere between 1 and 30 days. The Tenable connector is what we previously looked at. And the Tenable query is what we set up on the Tenable Security Center 
in the very first part of this video. You can see that the vulnerable items one already appeared and that it's showing the filters exploit available is true and the severity is critical or high. So once we've chosen the query that we wish to use, we can set the schedule. Now I've set mine to daily and it's going to run at 2300 hours. If I wish to execute this import immediately, for example, if this is the very first time that I'm importing vulnerability scan data from Tenable into my ServiceNow vulnerability response, I can click this Execute Now button. Otherwise, just click Update and it will run at the next scheduled time. Once you have successfully imported data into your ServiceNow vulnerability response, you can take a look at that data by clicking on Vulnerability Third Party. This is where all third-party vulnerability scan data is going to reside. And you can see tenable scan data by its prefix TNS. Let's take a look at one of these. Here we see a vulnerability that was pulled in from the Tenable Security Center into our ServiceNow vulnerability response. In this particular case, it's a vulnerability for Adobe Flash Player. You can see a wealth of information by scrolling down, including specific information about the threat as well as how to remediate it. We also see information from third parties such as the NIST CVE, and importantly it shows us which specific items in the Configuration Management Database or CMDB are affected by this. You can take a look at that and see additional information, including an overall risk score. The risk score is a combination of a few different factors, including the vulnerability, severity, and the overall business impact. So business impact is going to be whether or not it is a mission critical system. In this particular case, because this is a demo system on a non-production environment, it is non-critical. Therefore, the risk score is relatively low. Next, we can see the overall list of vulnerable items that have been found by the Tenable system. And finally, we can look at the vulnerability groups. Vulnerability groups are how ServiceNow automatically groups vulnerable items together to make it easier to manage them. There are a few different ways that this happens. One is manually created vulnerability groups, such as the first two that you see in this list. The WannaCry vulnerability group is going to automatically group together all vulnerable items that have the CVEs that match WannaCry. We also have additional vulnerability groups that were automatically created when vulnerability scan data was pulled in from the Tenable Security Center. What's nice about this vulnerability group is it allows us to handle a large number of vulnerable items in one fell swoop. We can do a variety of different things, such as create a security incident that gets handed off to our security incident response team. We can initiate a crisis workflow. If this is a high priority vulnerability that needs to be addressed immediately, we can automatically take action on a large number of affected items using this workflow. We can start an investigation which allows us to request additional information, pull data in from uh, third-party threat feeds, etc. Once this has been satisfied and we're done with this particular vulnerability group, we can close it and it can automatically initiate a rescan of the vulnerable items to ensure that they are indeed resolved. If you'd like to learn more about the Tenable application and how it integrates in with your ServiceNow instance, please visit us at servicenow.com. Thank you.